The tremendous amount of lamb and wool produced by the more than 30 million sheep in the United States gives some idea of what can be accomplished by the combined efforts of many individual owners to improve the quality of their stock by faithfully following recognized methods of improvement and maintenance. And since sheep raising is the only source of income for many Westerners, the practice of these methods should prove to be of profitable interest to them. One of the most important is culling, or removal of those animals whose wool and lamb production returns have fallen below the flock average. This inexpensive culling layout can be taken to the sheep, that is, set up on the open range to eliminate trailing the animals over long distances to permanent corrals. Here's a similar type of culling layout viewed from the opposite direction. Culling should be done throughout the year, but with large flocks, the desirable time to cull is before shearing or at shearing time before clipping, when there's a year's growth of wool. Culling, as it's being done here by simply feeling the wool on the sheep's back, is quite an art, but has proved to be an efficient method, and proficiency can be attained by persistent practice. After some experience, a culler is able to sense the different feel of a quality deep, dense fleece as compared to one that is harsh, light in density, and short in staple. The light shearers and poor-bodied sheep are marked for removal, to be sorted and sold at a convenient time and replaced with select yearlings. The heavy shearers are turned out to nearby pasture. Culling the farm flock is no less important and is often carried on by turning the sheep into a corral or other enclosure where the better animals can be easily recognized and removed while the poor ones are held to be disposed of when convenient. The difference in the size of these two animals is apparent at a glance and shows the vital necessity of culling. They are of the same breed and age, raised under the same conditions, yet there is no uniformity in size, quality of fleece, or body conformation. By comparison, the rump of the sturdier animal is wide and full, with the fullness extending well down on the legs. The body is long and broad. The shoulders and chest are wide and deep. Again, the touch technique shows the difference in wool density. Parting the wool between the hands reveals that of one animal to be of good quality and bright color. The yoke is even in texture and relatively free from foreign material. A tuft of it drawn out between the thumb and finger shows it to be of good density and fairly good length. The wool of the other animal is lower grade and because of being looser and shorter in length, it carries more dirt and chaff. It is short staple and light in density and has a low market value. The difference between these two samples of wool is an unmistakable indication of the difference in condition and value of the two animals from which they were taken and clearly shows the sheep man's loss. Now let's take a look at the two fleeces. They almost speak for themselves. Grease clip number one on the left is small and dirty compared to the other. Its weight of only five pounds means a low market value, a definite loss to the sheep man. Not only is there more wool in fleece number two, but it's of longer staple and therefore has a greater value per pound. A large fleece, 12 pounds of this quality, is mainly the result of careful and continuous culling. The yield of clean or scoured wool is the primary factor in determining the value of the original grease wool. The difference becomes obvious by comparing the two fleeces statistically. Culling should be a continuous practice from year to year. After shearing, it becomes even more apparent that the ewe on the left is a larger, deeper, thicker animal, showing more substance and quality. The loin is wide, the back broad, straight, and evenly covered with flesh. The chest of the desirable ewe is deep, wide, and full. The face is relatively free of wool.
the twist should be deep. The thigh full and wide, carrying well down on the legs. The legs should be straight, strong and wide apart. The demand for purebred stock to be used for breeding is constantly increasing. Progressive sheepmen of the West are always on the alert to obtain purebred animals of high lamb and wool producing ability with which to improve their flocks. A great deal of attention must be paid the type of rams used. They should be well bred, good bodied and heavily wooled and should be chosen while still young. Stud ram prospects should be selected carefully for market qualities at the time of weaning. Ram lambs such as this, having good growth, a rugged body with desirable form and finish, will likely make an acceptable sire as a yearling. A strong broad back, well covered with flesh, is highly desirable. While the twist should be deep and the thighs wide and heavy, the legs should be strong and set well apart. Good succulasture supplies a wholesome, nutritious diet for these animals. Sunshine, fresh air and plenty of good clean water are also essential. Ewe lambs must also be culled at regular intervals to constantly improve the flock, which in turn improves the quality and increases the weight of market lambs. These two lambs of the same age and breed present a good illustration of the necessity for culling. The one on the left is a second generation cull. The other is from a select U. The body is larger and heavier, and notice the superior size and quality of the fleece, which means a difference in the price of both meat and wool on the lamb market. The loin is wide by comparison, the back is broad and straight, with a heavy covering of flesh. Considering that both animals were fed the same food in the same quantities, the difference in their size and condition does not seem to warrant the cost of raising two animals of such extreme difference, when efficient culling would have resulted in marketable lambs of equal value. Now let's compare the dressed carcasses of the same two lambs. The better one on the left was graded choice, the other commercial. The difference being in quantity and quality of meat at a profitable price because of proper culling. Next to careful selection and proper feeding of stock, the most important consideration in sheep husbandry is the regular and systematic culling of the flock in order to keep it in thrifty condition for meat and wool production at a profitable return on investment of time, labor and money. This flock having been culled and supplied with replacements is a better flock than before it was culled and now goes to the range to feed and fatten. To recapitulate, the difference in density and length of wool staple can be determined by a developed sense of touch. The value of the wool clip depends upon the producing ability and quality of the animal from which it came and the feed conditions. Constant culling makes for high production and therefore increases the value of the lamb and wool crop. This fine flock of ranch sheep clearly shows the result of good practices in constant and systematic culling and careful selection of replacement stock over a long period of years. These ewes have the quality and stamina to produce profitable wool clips and vigorous fleshy lambs for several years and longer under farm conditions. However, any sheep culling program to be effective must be followed up from year to year, making culling standards more strict each year and choosing replacement selections for breeding ewes and rams. The ideal of maintaining those standards of constantly improving the quality of the flock is the primary purpose of culling sheep.